welcome to episode two of the beginner series Pong Tutorials, uh, where we left it the last time. I've made a couple of changes on the paddle. Uh, just to take a quick look at this, so what I've done is I've lowered the capsule height, and I've also made it thinner as well, more like a paddle rather than a, uh, a thick wall that we've been moving around. So if we go into the paddle, I'll show you, control space and open up the paddle. So click on the cube and I just lowered the x-axis to 0.1 and the capsule component, the capsule height, I lowered it down to 34 uh, so it sits more on the ground instead of the hovering above it. So last time where we finished off we've got a paddle moving up and down which is all well and good apart from there's nothing for it to hit. So that's what we're going to be working on today. We're going to be spawning in a ball, it's going to move and it's going to bounce. So we're going to look at collisions, we're going to look at some variables we can add and uh, hopefully that will go very smoothly. So control and space, open up your content browser, uh, right click and add blueprint class. This time we're going to be getting a pawn and we're going to call it Pong Ball and open it up. So we're going to add a couple of items here, so we're going to have a cube and on the left hand on the right hand side click the lock and we're going to lower it down to 0.2 compile and we can drag that into our world and see how big it looks which it should be fine and in the pong ball make sure you have the cube selected click add and type in box collision Change the scale to 111 and increase the box extent until it completely covers the cube. Make sure the collision preset on the box collision is overlap or dynamic and go into the cube and you want to set this to no collision. So if you open up the world, we see a paddle and a ball, which doesn't fall through the world. But it doesn't move, so we need to add some movement. So if you click on add, floating pawn movement, and we'll lower the max speed down to 300. Compile and save, and event graph. We're going to need the begin play, and we're going to need the tick. So to start off, we're going to add a... Uh, a, every movement, every frame, we're going to give it some movement. So click and drag floating pool movement out. Click off of this and go add input vector. And on the y axis, as it's the green arrow, we want to add either 1 or minus 1. So we'll try 1, see if it's the right way. Connect it to the tick. And that's the wrong way, so we'll go minus 1. And we can see it goes over to the, the paddle. We can also add 1 or minus 1 to x, so it will go up and down as well. But we want this to be randomised, but we don't want it to randomise every tick. We want it to randomise at the beginning. So to do this, we're going to need to create a vector which is a storage of information of a location or direction. So this is a direction, which is in one in the x-axis, one in the y-axis, which is a diagonal line. And so there's three ways of doing this. We can either right-click and promote a variable. We can trick, uh, click off and promote a variable. We can over, go over here and add a new variable, which is of the vector. So I'm just going to right click, promote to variable, and we're going to call this velocity. And then on begin play, we need to set what that velocity is. So we need to go click and drag and set velocity. You can also hold alt and drag, same as you can hold control and drag to get, or without holding anything, click and drag and you get the menu. 
So we only need to edit the X and the Y velocities. So we can click on the yellow icon here and split struct, which gives us access to the three axes separately. And we want to have a random bool, which is a true or false random. And we want to use a select node. You want to look for one with this icon there, and it's going to go based on true or false, do X or Y. Drag the return value into the X. Add minus one or one. Highlight both, control D to duplicate, and drag it off into the Y. Compile and save. And then if we play it a few times using Alt and P, you'll see it should go in a different direction every time. Perfect. So now we need to make the collision and we want it to flip its direction every time it collides with something. So for that, we're going to need to make these walls have a collision. So we're going to need to click on a wall and this button on the right hand side adds a blueprint of the actor. So we can call it wall underscore BP. And we're going to do something very similar to the ball. We're going to add a box collision. And we're going to make sure it fits the whole wall. Static mesh component. We're going to make sure it's got no collision. So it can't bounce off. There we go. Collision. Uh, but the box is going to have overlap or dynamic. Compile and save. You can see it's got the collision box surrounding it now. We can open up your content browser, make sure the wall BP is selected, click on the other other wall, and replace selected actor with wall. Now if you go to the ball, we want to set it so if it collides with the box or with the with the box the box of the ball collides with the wall or the paddle that it flips the direction so you want to click on the box and then down at the bottom we have the events we can go click on the begin overlap event we want to cast off from in actor or the other actor so we want to say that if this other actor is a wall so cast to wall and we can have a little bit of debug print string or say wall if it's not a wall you want to cast to a player paddle make sure to connect the actor up to the object and we can do the same thing again print string and paddle so now if we play it should hit a wall and say wall but it doesn't turn around yet. So we need to get velocity, hold control and drag, right click, split struct, and we will need to get the x axis because it's the red arrow, multiply by minus one. And we need to alt and drag split, struct, drag that onto the arrow, and we want the x into x, we want the y into y, and we want the z into z. Compile and save. And for the pedal, this is something very similar. Copy, paste, or control D. But we want to swap the y into minus one. File and save. So now if we play, it should bounce off the wall, bounce off the paddle. So for an additional test, we can add another paddle. I won't drag that one as it will copy all of its settings. Add, give it 
a very wide berth. So now we should be able to just play Pong with a wall. There you have it, guys. Thank you for watching. And uh, obviously, as usual, please like, subscribe, comment, and uh, join my Discord if you want any additional help. The more subscribers I get, the more complicated these tutorials will become. Um, so let's get that number up. Thank you very much, guys.